So this is the MRC Social Genetic and Developmental Psychiatry Centre. We're here in the Institute of Psychiatry, which is part of King's College London. And today we're having an open day to celebrate 100 years of the Medical Research Council. So this is our EEG lab. Um, EEG is the electrical activity of the brain, so it's uh, the activity of hundreds of neurons from the underlying brain structures, and it comes onto the scalp, and that's what we're measuring in your brain waves. Ah, that feels really cool! We can show the kids um, how different activities um, affect the way their brain waves are. So while we're putting the cap on, we're explaining that this is how we uh, collect brain activity data in the visitors we have here normally. And um, we're then showing them how moving their hair, being frightened or staying really still can change the way the brain waves slip. We're at the forefront of science really with our EEG work here. We're some of the first studies showing that these disorders are specific. Um, the first study is showing that EEG is, uh, shares genetic influence with, with ADHD. So although there's still a lot of work to do, I think we're definitely making major progress in the department. We wanted to engage the local community and people who maybe wouldn't know what sort of science goes on on this campus but walk past every day. We wanted to get them in and show them some of the science that we do. And here in the SGDP we're really interested in how nature and nurture interact. So what makes you the person that you are? Is it your genes? Is it the environment you experience? Is it the interplay between those two? The Twins Early Development Study, the TEDS, is the largest twin study of behavioral development in the world. It began in 1995. We're trying to study twins because it allows you to get at genetic and environmental influences by comparing identical twins like these twins and the other type of twins called fraternal or non-identical twins who are only 50% similar, whereas these guys are genetically identical to each other. By using the twin method, that is comparing identical and non-identical twins, we've shown that genetics is far more important in behavioral development than people realized. Children come preformed to some extent. It doesn't mean you can't do anything about children's development, but to a larger extent than people thought, genetics contributes and drives some of the development in behavior. Did you know the world record holders for the oldest living twins are Evelyn and Edith Rennie? They're 103 years old. Yes. And it's actually a myth that twins skip a generation. I think we respond to situations differently and we have different interests. Like she's really creative and stuff and I'm just more academic. Can't draw. She can't draw. I really can't draw. So We've studied these guys since they were two years old it would almost be criminal not to continue studying them because what we've been looking at is how you develop in terms of educational performance and mental health and illness, but they're just reaching the point at which it will tell how much of a difference this made as they get into early adulthood and make major life choices about you know, going to university or jobs and families and trouble with the law and all of that. So it, it's really critical that we continue studying them. A lot of people think that your genes really are deterministic, that they make you a certain sort of way, that they give you a certain kind of illness or talent. But of course, it's much more complicated than that. We want to explain to people that genes work in a probabilistic way. So they increase your likelihoods of problems or skills, but there's a lot that can be done and there's a lot of subtle interaction with the environment that you create and the environment that happens around you. We learnt how to build a brain. I've just been learning about DNA. So it's been quite good, yeah. It's interesting. And, and accessible. Obviously, Theo understands it. He seems to be getting it. We managed to harvest DNA from a strawberry, which was quite gruesome, and make some DNA strands out of sweets, and done some balance tests, and seen that my daughter has much better balance and much faster at a lot of things than me. It's actually interesting to see the, the good work that you guys are doing up here. It's quite amazing. You know, squeeze to grip it as strong as you can. We're looking for inexpensive, uh, easy tests that could be used in a GP's office just to test if a person who's aging is keeping up their strength because that's important for preventing falls and other uh, independent self-care. 
So this is a little device that you simply squeeze as hard as you can, as hard as you can, as hard as you can. Well done. Okay, now your average is 33.5. We look at the chart. How old are you? 16. 16. The average for a 16 year old is to be able to squeeze 30 kilograms and you did 33.5. So well done. You're well nourished. You're strong. You should be a very strong old lady. <laughs> Yeah, and what we would do then if you were in our research project is we'd bring you back every year and have you do this again. So as you age, we can trace whether your health is failing. For us, being in this big, beautiful building for 10 years and funded by the Medical Research Council has meant that we can bring together scientists who work in very different areas. We have psychiatrists, geneticists, psychologists. Being able to bring those people together has enabled us to really achieve much more than if we were all burrowing away at our own little areas of science in our own offices. Go! Oh, it's a good start. We're measuring a brainwave called theta and that's associated with either sleepiness or drowsiness. We're also measuring high beta, which is associated with more over arousal or muscle movement. Basically, we want you to be relaxed and focused. So we're measuring the brainwave in the middle called low beta, and this is the brainwave associated with attention or concentration. So basically, the more focused or attentive you are, the stiller and more relaxed you are, the more your cars will go. If you move, or if you become sleepy or overexcited, then the cars will stop. For a clinical population, we would work out where they have too much of a particular brainwave or not enough. Then we would set the equipment up to reward the frequencies we want more of or inhibit the frequencies we want less of. About 60% of the ADHD population has excess theta brainwaves in the front of the brain. So what we try and do is train people to produce the good brainwave and then with practice over time they would learn to control their brainwaves. I can't say what we'll be doing in 10 years time and certainly not in 100 years time but we hope that we'll continue to be supported and uh, there are all sorts of interesting questions to explore. You know, how do children compensate for difficulties? Uh, why do some young people do so remarkably well even when it looks like everything is going against them? And can we help other young people to do equally well uh, if we can understand those success stories?